Welcome back to another instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your co-host Mike Broadman. Joining me once again is my co-host Richie Schneiderite. Richie has officially lost the over-under bet from this weekend. Uh, we got three commitments by Saturday, which is kind of a little strange. Normally they don't commit to the end of a visit, but everyone mm -hmm. was putting these commitments out mid-visit. So I wonder if that's going to be a new thing that happens. Uh, so Rutgers got commitments from Aris Bathia from uh, Erasmus Hall in Brooklyn. They got a commitment mm -hmm. from Montel jo uh, Johnson, who's a linebacker from uh, the Detroit area, I believe. And yep. they also got a commitment from, uh, is it Dakari Gilly? He's a DB from Florida. Correct. So let's go through those in order. Uh, the name that should be most familiar to Rutgers fans is uh, uh, Rasmus Hall's Eris Bathia. He's the brother, I believe, of Armand Bathia, who's at Arizona State, or was at Arizona State. I think he might have transferred. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, this is one of uncle Lenny's crew, uh, who he's been yeah. talking about for a while. So the first of the uncle Lenny group has committed, uh, tell me a little bit about him and where, uh, where I think you might've crystal balled him or been alluding to Rutgers was in a really good spot with Aris Bathia, but just tell us about his game and, and, uh, I guess how the commitment came together. Yeah. So, uh, I actually future casted in May 6, it says I probably should have done it a lot sooner than that, but I was waiting here on, uh, kind of where he was slotted on the defensive line board for Rutgers, but, uh, he was, he's, uh, pretty close to the top for them at defensive tackle. He's, he's a little on the smaller side. I think we have him listed six three two fifty. I want to say the weight is correct. Um, but the height's probably a little iffy. I'm probably saying it's more like six, one, six, one and a half, something like that. But, uh, he, uh, he ended up not coming to our rivals camp because he ended up hurting his hamstring the day before. But uh, I've seen him plenty of times, so it didn't really matter. Uh, he's, he's a little on the shorter side, but he's got a really quick get off for his size. Um, now, most of you probably heard 250, 250 pounds in defensive tackle, and you're probably like, what the fuck? Like, no. Like, um, so, yeah, he has to pack on some weight, significant weight. I think he uh, he's definitely going to redshirt when he gets to Rutgers. Uh, um, he's going to arrive in January like, like the other E-Hall group uh, have done in the past, like Moses Walker uh christian is et cetera et cetera um yeah i mean this is just a really good get from a program that you, you really trust if you look at e halls like uh where they're sending kids for the most part it's the programs they trust more than ever and uh it's like look at bowling green they just they sent like what three or four kids over the past couple of years including bethia's older brother uh recently who just transferred there and and then ruckers for the most part so it's a really good connection between ruckers and the e hall uh Bethia it's himself is a pretty solid prospect. I think you have a pretty accurate way to rate it. Um, now, in terms of talking to coaches and people in the, in the inside info uh, about Bethia and his little background, he's not going to get outworked by anybody. I know Lenny posted it on the boards too, but from what I was told by like four or five different people so far is this kid will outwork everyone in the weight room. It doesn't matter. He's just going to keep pushing and pushing. And, and he's smart too when it comes to football. He's a uh, Get good instincts. So I think I think this is actually going to be a really good get. I know everyone hypes up Caden Brown, his teammate, but I think Bethia is more of the sure thing, and I think Bethia is going to be a really good prospect for Rutgers. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great connection to keep in the pipeline. <clears throat> Obviously, Erasmus Hall has you know been great to Rutgers, and Rutgers has mm -hmm. helped develop a lot of their guys in the NFL prospects. Um, but this just kind of continues the uh, – the out of state to New Jersey connection uh, for yeah. Rutgers. Not that, you know, I think Shiano would consider uh, the New York City area in the quote unquote state of Rutgers, but yeah. uh, this is another big commitment. Um, this is a kid who at one point didn't look like he was going to have at Rutgers, but then things mm -hmm. changed pretty quickly. Uh, so this is a solid pickup, a lot of good offers. And this is the kind of kid that you, you want to consistently get if you're uh, Greg Shiano in, in the Rutgers program. Kids in your backyard who have, you know, local interest from, you know, the Boston colleges, the pits of the world. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of recruiting battles you have to win. Yeah. Um, anything else on Aris uh, that you think is worth talking about before we move on to the next uh, commitment? Uh, I mean, not really. Uh, nine, nine offers. I think uh, eight of them were power five. He beat out Ole Miss, who was in his final four, along with, uh, I think it was Nebraska and Virginia Tech, I think it was. I know West Virginia and Virginia Tech were pushing pretty hard. I, I think Virginia Tech, from what I was told, finished second in this battle. So it, it's always good to beat out a couple Power Five programs. Um, it's definitely not a bad thing, and um, you beat them out pretty handedly too. Um, this this was kind of a pretty good job by Marquise Watson. I was told uh, he did a great job of selling the program to the kid. I know it's obviously E Hall, and E Hall, like I just mentioned, has a great connection with Rutgers, regardless. So. 
that obviously plays a role. But uh, yeah, I was told Marquise Watson really led the way here. And hey, again, what is that? Three now for Marquise? Four? Yeah. Something like that? He's, he's on fire. He's, he's killing it right now. The defensive line class is almost filled because of him. So <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's been good for him. Good recruiting shot to start for him. For sure. Uh, so the next commitment we got uh, this weekend was from Florida defensive back Dakari Gilly. This is mm-hmm. another kid who you put a uh, future cast in for, I want to say like weeks ago at this point. It was only a felt, week, but. It was a week ago? All right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything's just, I can't it's even keep track of things Rockin'. anymore. Uh, so this is clearly a kid you felt really good about Rutgers landing. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about how he became a Rutgers commit and what you think of his game. Yeah, so uh, Dakari Gilly is a giant athlete out of uh, Jacksonville, Florida, University Christian School down there. Um, He's not ranked currently, but he should be ranked by the time you're probably listening to his podcast, which is either Monday morning, ideally, but uh, or maybe posted Sunday. I don't know, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. Monday, they're going to get new rankings, new rankings updates Mm -hmm. coming out this week. So he's going to get a ranking uh, finally. I think he should be a 5.6 personally. Um, He's interesting, though, because most of his – his high school career, he played wide receiver and that's why he was listed wide receiver until yesterday when we switched it to athlete. But uh, yeah, so he played wide receiver for his freshman, sophomore year, his junior year, he actually switched and started playing more DB. And that's when the offer started to come in. That's when like the Georgia techs and the Pittsburgh and Liberty and South Florida, central Florida. Now I say those schools and you're probably like, Oh yeah, those G five schools. It's like, no, 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 no. Those are power five schools now. So it's these, these are significant uh, programs that they beat out too, because it is a Florida kid. And, my main concern when it comes to Florida kids, if you don't have like those Florida offers, it's probably a red flag in my opinion. Um, but the fact that he has all those tells me that he's probably a pretty good prospect. They wanted to keep him home. They tried to keep him home, but uh, this is a great get for Rutgers. I spoke with him uh, a little bit in depth about his uh, or prior to his commitment, and he uh, he was very excited about this visit. Joe Harris Simiak found him, did a great job recruiting him, and coordinators really don't recruit. So the fact that Harris Simiak kind of went out of his way to get this kid kind of tells me how high. He, he is on him and his potential. Um, he had a team high 24 and a half uh, tackles for loss last year as a, as a DB, which is pretty impressive. Um, he also ran a 11.06 hundred meter dash, which is really fast for a kid that's 6'2", 185. Like, so mind you, he is coming in as a defensive back. He's coming in as a safety is that tall, lengthy safety or DB that Shiano loves, but his plan is probably going to, push him to linebacker in the future. If I had to guess, it's kind of like that Willie love type situation where he's got the same build, except Willie love has more weight to him than this kid. So I wouldn't be shocked if, uh, if he ends up at linebacker when it's all said and done, but end of the day, it's a really good get for Rutgers. And um, I, th- I think this is a super underrated kid because uh, not, not really many people knew about him. Yeah, no, I believe that um, Rashad Knight, uh, the old, remember the four star safety we landed probably 15 years ago, and Shiana's yes. 1.0 reign mm-hmm. was also from Jacksonville Christian. So, this is a school who uh, mm. obviously Shiana has a relationship with, um, and just another another under the radar Florida kid who I'm not saying he will decommit or not. I'm just saying this is a constant thing we all need to be aware of with Florida kids that it's you got, you got to be on them like you're they're not committed the whole time. Yeah, uh, but from everything you've told me and for everything I've heard, this is a Pretty nice commitment from a guy who wasn't heavily recruited, and uh, so I hope it stays that way because uh, I like to get him on the banks. Yeah, no, I, um, I think he's very solid. I think he's very into Rutgers. He loved the visit, and uh, yeah, like like you said before, Saturday commitment. So he kind of just came to campus, and it was like that was pretty much it. And that's kind of why so I submitted the future cast on the the second. So, yep, yeah. So he's the second of three commitments this past week. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we move on to the next? Um, no, I don't really think there's much else. I mean, like I said, he had a couple good offers. Um, nothing crazy out of this world, but, uh, we've talked about him for quite some time. I even had him in our, uh, our Jan our January or June crystal crystal ball feature, which, uh, basically predicts the class, which it's, it's starting to look pretty good. Mind you, I missed the Lumen brothers, but other than that, like it's pretty accurate so far. Yeah. Um, and with recruitments being like sped up more and more, it's getting mm-hmm. uh, a little easier to read a, a a crystal ball uh, ahead of time now because most of these oh, kids yeah. are committed before their uh, senior year even starts. Where mm-hmm. you know some so. co- some recruitments don't didn't even start until their you know summer before their senior year you know ten years ago. So yeah, pretty wild stuff. So yeah, um, good get though. So let's talk about the third commitment 
from this past weekend. Uh, it was from Montel Johnson. He's a middle linebacker from Michigan. Tell us a little bit about him, because I don't think he was a guy that we were really predicting to commit in uh, to Rutgers after his visit. So yes, he must have so got swept up in it. I had him actually um, pegged to go to Rutgers back in April. He actually called Rutgers' leader after a visit, and then I was like, I reached out to a couple people. He didn't come back to campus for spring. He only went there for a junior day visit in January. And uh, I was like, all right, well, he's starting to, it sounds like he's fading off a little bit. He started scheduling other official visits. He had one to Boston College. He had one to Kansas. I think he had one to West Virginia as well, I think it was. Or, yeah, it was West Virginia. Um, and then he started adding more offers. He had at Missouri, he had at Louisville, Kentucky, Purdue. And I'm like, all right, well, I haven't heard much about him. So I'm assuming that's it. Like, he's probably gone. Then he schedules a Rutgers official visit, and it's like, all right, maybe they're back in it. So, um, in that same article, that June, uh, that June crystal ball feature, I actually posted in there. I, I didn't have him in there technically, but I posted that they have a shot at him, which, which was correct, obviously. But he came to campus and just fell in love, and that was pretty much it. Um, Corey Heatherman did a great job here. I know we talked about it on the message board, but we didn't talk about it on the pod. So, most of the recruiting or your main recruiter is most likely going to be your position coach. Now it kind of sways away from the area recruiters. Yeah. There's still some area recruiters like Demir Shaw is still going to get Philly. Um, Drew Lascari is still going to get part of Florida. Harris Simiak's kind of just going to do everything. But uh, Corey Heatherman here uh, did a great job of uh, recruiting and landing a damn good linebacker at that. Um, like I mentioned before, several power five offers West Bloomfield in Michigan there. It's a public school, but they, they produce at a high rate. Um, inside linebacker, 6'2", 225. He's probably a Mike at the next level too, but he does move pretty well for a Mike. So I, you could probably put him on the outside if you really wanted to, but we have him still listed as inside because that's mostly where he plays for them. But, uh, yeah, I, I like this get a lot. This is my, I, I hate to say, I hate to, I'm not bad mouthing the other two by any means because I think they're good gets in their own right, but this is the get of the weekend in my opinion. Yeah, because, I mean, Rutgers – well, they had some good linebacker play last year. They didn't really have much linebacker depth, and they're slowly starting to build that. And I know that was partially because, you know, Moses Walker got hurt before the season started. Of course. And they were expecting to get back um, – <clears throat> what's his name? Uh, St. Peter's kid, number 11. Uh, Drew Singleton. Yeah, they were expecting Drew Singleton back, yeah. and he kind of got screwed. So uh, they're, they're starting to build some pretty nice linebacker depth with some younger kids uh, who – I, I don't I don't think there's been a single linebacker we've taken that we haven't been like this, this kid actually is pretty fucking good. Yeah, between him and Sam Pioff, that's it's a hell of a linebacker co- class, and you're also getting uh, you're getting in the Midwest. That's that's what you want to do yep. if you're Rutgers. If you're not going to get these kids, like I say it all the time, if you're not going to get these kids to stay home from Jersey, fuck them, go somewhere else <laughs> and go go to Michigan and go get one yep. and look what you did. But um, yeah, I said before, West West Bloomfield produces at a high rate, and I just I'm looking now, and I I realize they do produce at a high rate, but I'm looking again, and it's like 2024 class has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven kids with offers. Um, they have uh, Brandon Davis Swain, who's number 36 in the country. They have Kari Jackson, who's 193 in the country. Um, kid committed to Colorado, kid committed to Penn State, kid committed to Northwestern, Rutgers, Western Michigan so far, and just this class alone. And then they have a couple in future classes too. So this is this is good for them to get into Michigan and get into this um, big feeder program. So, I mean, this is, this is going to be very big for Rutgers going forward, not just in this class, not just with this prospect, but just uh, in, in the terms of West Bloomfield High School in general. So this, this is I, – I can't state it enough. This is very big, like huge. Yeah, no, I like this kid a lot. Um, is there anything else about Montel Johnson uh, before we move on to other topics that you wanted to, to discuss? Um, no, I don't really think so. Uh, shout out to um, our uh, national recruiting analyst, Greg Smith. So he's kind of new to the to the boards and uh, to rivals, I guess, technically. he's uh, He was a Nebraska recruiting analyst for rivals, but uh, he stepped up. And uh, Quint Cosgrove, shout out to him too. He just had a baby with his uh, with his wife, so newborn and then greg smith kind of took over from until he's back and uh he, he got the he got the article out pretty quickly for us i appreciate it that's awesome um so obviously a huge recruiting weekend for football we're hearing this is some more good news that we can tease right now uh we can't say much more about that but we should uh you should be 
stay tuned to staying tuned to the boards and your podcast feeds because there is uh, some more good news coming out of the weekend, and that's really all mm-hmm. I can say at the moment. Um, Are you talking about Monday or Tuesday? Because this could be double uh, the news. <laughs> that's a good point for football. There's oh for football uh, for yeah, football. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes that but, could be uh, interesting. There's also some good news coming for, for basketball. A couple new uh, good news is coming for basketball. But we did want to touch on something uh, related to basketball. Uh, obviously, the last pod we were discussing a lot about Paul Mulcahy, transfer portal entrance. Uh, we have gotten a lot of new intel over the last couple of days about the situation. And I think, uh, Richie, since you're the, the information gatherer, why don't you just kind of go into what, what else you're hearing about Paul transferring out? Yeah, so basically I had a long talk with a couple people, um, one that's very close to Paul. Um, from what I was told, he actually um, did this, not even in the transfer, let's just start with this. He did have the one workout with the Denver Nuggets. I'm told it really went well. He wants to get to the NBA. That is his goal. But does he get there? I think right now, if you had to, if I had a gun to my head, no, he's not going to get there. But that's his goal. He wants to get to the NBA, and he doesn't feel like – he was going to start at Rutgers as well, I was told. It sounds like they were kind of moving him around a little bit. And with Noah Fernandes coming in, with Derek Simpson stepping up, and Rutgers kind of completely changing the the offense for the most part because, well, there wasn't really an offense. So they're <laughs> changing that completely. But uh, And it's going to be a lot more fast-paced. And no offense to Paul, but, like, he's not a fast guard. He's not one of these small, quick guards that everyone loves nowadays. Like, he's not – um. that's, that's basically – that's kind of how the – the Big East is, and that's kind of why UConn won it all because they had great guard play. Um, so now with this new group of guards and Fernandes and Simpson and Jamichael Davis, and they're all speedy, they're all small, they're all quick, and Paul doesn't really fit that mold, and that's where it was kind of like you didn't really know where he was going to fit into this lineup, which whatever, but he wants to make the NBA, and so his feeling was basically I was told that he's going to go elsewhere because he wants to go somewhere that will give him a chance at that NBA dream. Like I said, is it going to happen – I don't think so, personally. But um, that's that's his dream. And like every other kid, they want to make it to the league. Um, and yeah, he, he got a he got a gift with the COVID year, so he he played his four years at Rutgers. He did his his work there. He he did uh have some good years. He had some ups moments, some some down moments. But um, yeah, I mean that's 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 pretty much it. He's uh he's gonna just he's he's gonna go somewhere else, and that's that's it, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I get that, you know, he could probably see the writing on the wall that, you know, you're not bringing in a guy like Noah Fernandes who has one year of eligibility left to sit on the bench. He's he's going to start, and he's going to be the primary ball handler, and that previously was Paul's role, and so Paul's going to have to adapt to playing a significantly different role in Mm 2023-24 than he previously had, and he's got so much tape as a point guard. He sees himself as a point guard. Like you said, he wants to make the NBA. So might as well just keep on that path to see if he could achieve that dream. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I, I hope he, he makes it there. But at the yeah. same time, he's going to get offers from pretty high major schools to start in, you know, a decent to great lineups. So I don't really blame him for doing it. It just really sucks about the timing. Like you're a captain, you leave June 9th to, mm. yeah. You know, to go to another school after, you know, that's, you kind of yeah. left them hanging. That's that's really what kind of – if you would have done this in March, I think everybody would have been like, Perfectly we get fine. it. Paul, you had a, you know, you had a rough year. You were both, you know, on the court. You, you were playing hurt all year. I can only imagine – like, we only hear probably 10% of what guys are actually going through mm-hmm. on a year-to-year basis. We know of the shoulder injury. I heard that there was more injuries that happened in the summer that he was playing through as well. Yeah. So I, I get it. Um that's just, the only yeah. thing I have issue with. Like, it's just, I'm sorry, timing. I didn't cut you off. No, you're good. Yeah, the timing is just like, that's the big thing. I get it. Like, I was told he was wrestling with this decision back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. One day he'd wake up and be like, all right, I think I'm going to leave. Next day it's like, yeah, I don't know. No, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to leave. And it's like, all right, dude, you, I'm sorry, but you got to kind of pick. You can't be dragging yeah. this out all the way. The staff was pretty confident they were going to get him back up until, I want to say, two to three weeks ago. And that's when the rumors started to circulate a little bit. And then it's like, all right, well, then, boom, hits the portal. And it's like, all right, well, here we go. But, uh, yeah, it's it's tough. You can't be you can't be doing this to the team. I, I know this and that. Like, you you, you got to wrestle with the decision. But, like, it's June. 
Like your yeah. kids are reporting next week. Like it's that's the rough part. That's the part I don't like at all. But it is what it is. You just move on. Can he be replaced? I I do. I was pretty adamant in the last pod too. I I do think he could be replaced. I don't think it's as crazy as it sounds. Um, is the portal filled with players to replace him? No, but there's still some gems out there you could find. Um, I I still think you go after Luther Muhammad. I think that's the the go to right there, but. It makes too much sense, almost in my opinion. But uh, also, like Derek Simpson stepping up too. I think he's going to be yeah. a, at this point. I think he's the two guard, one guard, whatever you want to. You can mix and match him; it doesn't really matter. Uh, yep. Between him and Fernandes, I think that's your starting backcourt, and I'm I'm kind of okay with that because it's pretty quick. Did Derek have the greatest numbers in the world when he was starting? No, he was shooting what thirty something percent over those last four games, last five games. Um. But his last game against Hofstra, like he actually was the only reason they kind of were in it for the most part. Yeah, <laughs> he was nineteen. Yep. Like yep. He, he scored double digits in double digits in five of his last six games to end the season, including the big game, the breakout game against uh Penn State, uh, where he went six of fourteen. Now is he a three point shooter? No, he's he's actually pretty bad at three point shooting, but <laughs> it, it's it is what it is. I think he'll figure it out. I think um uh, He's, he's probably taking a little bit too many of them, but that's fine. We'll, we'll figure that out. And then you got Noah Fernandes next to him, who's probably going to be your leading scorer, I think, next year um, in terms of the backcourt, uh, at the very least. Maybe Cliff still gets that leading scoring role. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think Derek earned his right to, uh, to be the starting guard next to Fernandes. So go with those two. Add a backup in, like, uh, Luther Muhammad, like I said before. There's Noah Farrakhan, who's a Jersey guy. Another Jersey guy I just posted today is Adam Silas out of uh, Wofford. He's uh, he only averaged like three points a game, but it's, it's just a body at this point. Like you need somebody that's had has deal and experience. So I think you add one of those guys, and then uh, you you need another wing slash four. And uh, also like like I mentioned last pod, the JUCO big man Emmanuel Ogbo. I'm very confident in that right now. It sounds like, and uh, he was on an official visit last week, so. Just kind of waiting and seeing to uh, see if some news breaks soon. Yeah, um, that could be one of the things we were alluding to. Uh, but yeah. we will, again, you got to just stay tuned to your podcast feed. Stay tuned to the boards because uh, we might have something. Uh, might have something notifications on our Twitter yeah. already. Like, what are you waiting for? Just, just yeah, just <laughs> any, you know, make sure you put notifications on for our podcast gets released because we got you covered anytime this big news dropping. Um, Sounds like we might have what one Sunday, one Monday, one Tuesday, maybe a third one. <laughs> not one, not two, not three, maybe. not four, not five, uh, not six. The second yeah, best athlete to ever go to Miami. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so, you know, messy. Uh, prepare for a lot of content this week, guys, because uh, there's a lot that's gonna come out. Yeah, um, but that's kind of all we got for today. Is there anything else we missed that you wanted to touch on? No, I mean, uh, I do, I do want to say uh, I'm sorry we didn't get this out on Saturday because uh, obviously uh, we we have lives other than this. Yeah. Um, sometimes you don't think we do when we record like 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 we said this week we'll have like a bunch of podcasts. But um, went to AC last night and uh, sitting there in valleys right and some tall guys walking past me and I'm like what? You just cut out for a sec. Yeah, you cut out for a sec. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in valleys yesterday. I'm like, and, uh, went to the wild, wild west at night, which is one of my friend's birthdays. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, who the fuck is that tall guy? Everyone's like looking at him. And I was like, I was like, yeah, you, know, you know what? I'm just going to walk up to him. I'm like, Hey man, what's up? What's going on? He, I was like, who do you play for? Cause you're seven foot tall. There's no way you don't play somewhere. It's like, I'm yeah, Mitch yeah. Robinson. I'm like, Oh, what's good, oh, man. How's, how's it going? Like, I'm going to get a photo um, real quick. That's wild. And so now I might be breaking news here. I'll be honest with you. All right. I, t- I took it. a photo and as I'm taking a photo with him, someone walks past and just flips him off. And I'm like, ah, oh, dude, <laughs> dude must have been a Nets fan. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. Oh my God. He's like, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I'm a Nets fan. I was just bullshitting with him back and forth. And then he goes, mm-hmm. uh, he's like, I'll be honest with you. I'm a Warriors fan. I'm like, whoa, Warriors fan. Hold wow. on. Are you a free agent? And he's like, I'm just saying, if I if I can go somewhere. And I was like, oh, you know, well, I might break the news here. Um, wow. Side note, um, do we want to – I can edit this out if you want. But do you want to – he just committed. Who did? Bauman. Okay. Yeah, so might as well just keep it keep, just keep it keep going. It yeah. All right. So all right, so much uh, for that pod. <laughs> so guys, the, the the surprise was Sean Bowman, uh the tight end from Maine. Uh mm-hmm. that's kind of wild. I think this is the first time we've actually oh, like had a live a, reaction pretty much. A live reaction <laughs> to it. So this is a guy who 
uh, was first highlighted by the Night Report um, as a, a target that Rutgers should show interest in, and it turns out they did. Uh, this is a guy, he's 6'5", 255 is what his main profile mm -hmm. lists him at, I think, on ESPN. He's listed at 263. Uh, regardless, he's a fucking big boy. Uh, soft hands. He's a really good receiver. He was uh, PFF's 24th ranked tight end out of almost 500 qualifying tight ends this past year. Mm -hmm. He had 30 catches for like 350 yards and five touchdowns in eight games. His season got cut short due to a, a leg injury, but he's back to 100% uh, health. This is a guy who Rutgers jumped on almost immediately, as reported by uh, a few different sources. And Rutgers got him on campus this past weekend. They're trying to keep it hush hush. I know that they didn't want you to report on it, uh, but he was on campus. And this is the type of guy you have to just wrap up immediately because you let him linger on the market. Somebody else is going to snatch him up. And ultimately, they were able to close, uh, which has not been the strength of the staff with, with Portal guys uh, this offseason. So yeah. this is a huge pickup, especially on June 11th. So just tell us a little bit about Sean Bowman's game and, and what you're hearing about his visit and how his his recruitment kind of wrapped up. Yeah. So he, um, <clears throat> he's interesting. So he was a, uh, Delaware native, got a late, late, he had some like small offers from like D2 schools, but got a late offer out of high school. And that late offer was from Maine, obviously. Um, he ends up committing like two days later, three days later, whatever it was. And, uh, sorry, I'm trying to tweet it out. Um, <laughs> what, what do you call it? He, uh, yeah. So he got a late offer from Maine and then he committed like almost immediately to coach, Corey Heatherman, who was his main recruiter at the time, who was the head coach of the main program. It was Joe Harris Simiak. And those are the only two coaches he actually tagged in his commitment tweet. So it's like the connection was there from the get. Interesting. Um, so yeah, he's very close to those two. Went to Maine for a couple years, did his thing, obviously answered the transfer portal. I want to say what, like a week ago, maybe at this point, maybe less. No, it was this week. So I think it was like Wednesday. Yeah. So even, even earlier than that, but so he, uh, he went in the transfer portal. Rutgers got him on campus immediately. I shouldn't say this. Rutgers, let's start with this. Rutgers offered him immediately. It was the first program to offer. Mississippi State offered after that. Oregon was very close, pushing for him in the visit. Uh, Louisville was pushing for him to visit. Mississippi State wanted him on campus. Rutgers got him on campus, kept it really quiet, kept it great. They got it done, locked him in. You probably just have your starting tight end now. Now you can run more 12 yep. personnel sets and stuff like that. Um, he's. I think he's going to be your best tight end by far. And that's no – I mean – it's not a knock to other guys, but it is a knock to other guys, to be honest. But because the tight end group isn't great. They haven't developed too much. Yeah. They've, they've struggled over the past couple of years. I think Langan was the best of that group by far. And I I, I like, like, like Langan. I think he's a hard-ass worker. He's a hard-nosed kid. He'll give his all on the field. We've seen him bloody on the field, for God's sakes. Yeah. But um, he's not the greatest tight end in the world. Kanaka yeah. was developing a little bit. He's getting better. Higgins is too young. Uh, I feel like they brought in someone else that I, I'm completely missing. But didn't they bring in a freshman? Um, I'm not sure, honestly. I know we got Oganai in this class. Obviously, he's not going to be on campus until uh, next season. Yeah, and um, Monte Keener, too. Mm -hmm. uh, re regardless, anyway, it, it doesn't matter. Whoever, if they did bring in a freshman, I can't remember. But um, he's probably not going to play as a freshman, so it doesn't matter. Um, so this is why it's big, because this kid is not only – connected to the program not gonna be your best tight end but he's a great receiver and yep. this is this kind of changes your offense completely the, with the way the portal looked it looked like looked like shit in the spring game there's just no way around <laughs> it, it and you were missing wide receiver one jaquay jackson wide receiver two nasim brantley wide receiver three slash chris two long. a two yeah. b chris long um so yeah like and now now you have your you're missing your tight and high tight end one as long as that line can give Gavin Winstead some time. This offense could be completely different now. And I'm a little bit more confident. Now that four, four and a half, whatever it was over under, kind of looks makes a little bit more sense. Now I'll be honest with you. After that spring game, I'm sitting there, I'm like, three, four yeah. wins, maybe. If you if you can beat Virginia Tech, which I wasn't confident in. Now I'm like, all right, shit, maybe we have a decent offense. Like you might be able to pull a bowl game out of this one. So we'll see. Yeah, and I think it's so important that I mean, I talk about this in like NFL scope a lot with like, you can't really judge a quarterback if he has like below average everything. It's like, how, how good are you supposed, how, how are, how are you supposed to know how good a player is if he's just got a bad offensive line, he's got bad weapons in the passing game, blah, blah, blah. Now I think 
with the weapons around both Gavin and Evan Simon, I think they're going to get a pretty good determination on how good those two guys are because Jaquay Jackson is their wide receiver one. He's really good. I mean, will he be like all Big Ten level good? I don't know. But this is a guy who can play. Zane Brantley can play. Sean Bowman can play. Sam Brown can play. The offensive line should be improved from last year. Um, I think you'll be able to get a pretty honest evaluation of where our quarterbacks are, and that'll be huge moving into next season, whether that be Gavin or Evan, or whether that be the, the staff knowing they have to go get a guy. All right, lost you for a second, but uh, we're good now. Now, now you can hear me. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I lost you for the whole thing almost kind of, <laughs> but I heard no, the just, ending and the yeah, quarterback just, thing. Yeah, Just about taking... having good, decent enough weapons to make an honest evaluation on where our quarterbacks are. Yeah, and that's that's huge because now you can, like you just mentioned, you can really see if if Gavin is the guy or not. If he's not, then so be it. We have, you have to go to the portal. You got to go find someone. Um, I don't think AJ Sarace will be ready by year one. Maybe you never know because that kid. I actually really like that kid. I think he's going to be a really good, uh, really good prospect for Rutgers down the line. Maybe not year one, but I think year two, year three. Like he might be your starting quarterback for mul- multiple years. Um, or you just go to the portal, get a stopgap like everyone else yeah. does. This is this is just how it works. Look at Northwestern. They just got the Cincinnati quarterback just for a year who I think is actually pretty decent. So that's why uh, that game goes into a little bit of a question mark. But now, again, you had another really good prospect on offense. And I'm like, oh, shit, maybe, maybe you're just going to snag, win all those out-of-conference games, you get three. And then if you had to beat Northwestern, that's four. You just gotta you gotta snag two more somewhere, and it, it's very possible. I think this offense is going to be a, a lot different now. I'm a little bit more confident. They still need protection. I don't think that's a question, but um, if they get that protection at all, like in the slightest, if uh, Pat Flaherty can do anything with this offensive line, like, I mean, if you just give him a fucking giant pay bump and be like, dude, you're yeah, you're a godsend. Here you go. <laughs> and this is the exact type of player who Kirk Soraka seems to to love to utilize in his offense too, like mm-hmm. just big bodies over the middle of the field, whether it be receivers or tight ends. So this gives him another piece to play with. And I, I'm, you know, I, I've been a pessimist about how I feel this next season's going, but you know, I feel like Mar- Michael Corleone right now in Godfather three, each time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. <laughs> yep. and so I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get more and more confident. Uh, it's all ultimately like every year, the past, how many years for Rutgers fans, it's going to come down to how quarter, the quarterback play is. Uh, so, yeah, honestly, that's the crazy thing is in, it could, it could cost them, but well, I, I don't want to talk too much bad because I, I think he could be decent. It's just, ah, it's tough. It's a tough call. Yeah. But I do yeah. like him a lot though. This is, this is the way that you really have to approach when guys enter the portal, you have to just be like a fucking viper. You have to just like immediately react immediately, just try and get them on campus to just, just like wrap up their recruitments. Because if you let them sit out there, there's going to be schools who, you know, miss on their target or whatever, and then can offer a ton of money. You just got to mm-hmm. get these guys in the fold as quickly as possible. And they did it this time. And so kudos to them. Yeah, uh, really big get for Rutgers. I am very happy about this. Now, is he a great blocker? Not really, but he's a pretty good uh, receiving tight end, like I said, and he's, uh, he did it against Boston College this past season. I know Boston College isn't great, but uh, touchdown, 30-something yards, three receptions. He's, he's proven he can do it at the Power 5 level, and uh, he's got familiarity with the staff. I know, mind you, it's a defensive staff, but, uh, yeah, I think this is a great get. This is a uh, – this is this is very good. This is like a true tight end one, and it's going to really help uh, Kirk Scherrock's schemes. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, is there anything else about any of the equipments, uh, both new and old, uh, that you wanted to hit on before we actually sign off this time? Uh, you know, right, let's make sure no one else committed. Okay, we're good. <laughs> we're we're good for now. Um, for now, let's let's give for it now. a day and see what happens. Um. But yeah, no, I I would say that's from shit. They're all pretty good gets for for football. Um, I know I I've, I've been in the dumps a little bit with football. I'm not gonna lie, it's it's, it's been ugh. But the Lumen brothers, uh, Aristathea, Gilly, this whole class is starting to shape up to be a really nice class. Like it's it's gonna. T- I know someone asked me they're like top twenty five, and I'm like, all right, all right, that's that's relax a bit, okay. It's mm-hmm. still a nice class. It doesn't have to be top twenty five. I know it's nineteen right now. That's not gonna stay. We all know that. That's just how it works. It's it's just because they have 14 commitments when everyone else has eight commitments or nine commitments or whatever. Um, 
but I do think a top 35 class is very possible. I think that they're, they're pretty close to it now. Um, especially with Montel. I didn't see coming on board. Um, the Lumen brothers, I didn't see coming on board. Um, there's some other pieces too. Like uh, we keep forgetting like Gabriel Winowich, he was on campus this weekend too. And he, he's a really good player in his own right. Um, yeah. AJ Serace is a great quarterback. I just hyped up before. Sam Pilaf is going to be really fucking good. Yeah. He's phenomenal. Wisconsin wanted him. They're whatever. They didn't take him. And now he's over at Rutgers, which is huge for Rutgers. So they don't really care. But I can't say it enough. They, they're hitting this Midwest. They're hitting every other, like other states. They're like, all right. Like I said before, Jersey kids don't want to stay home. It's like, we got, what am I looking at? Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Um, mm -hmm. Florida, 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 North Carolina, potentially North Carolina again with uh, Benjamin Black, who they're doing well with. Maryland, uh, New York, New York, New York, if they can pull that one off. So, I mean, it, they don't, they're just hitting everywhere. They're, they're expanding the state of Rutgers. This is exactly what you need to do. And I think this might be, this, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think this class will be Shiano's best class since his return to the banks. Really? Even better than that first class where you had like, Three or four or four stars? I think it I really think it might be. Um you're wow. talking about that twenty twenty one class, right? Yes. I think it Sorry, was no, twenty twenty yeah, twenty twenty one, I think. Was it twenty twenty one? The one with Anthony Johnson and uh Oh, uh, um, that was twenty twenty two technically that one. You're talking twenty twenty one when they had Kyrie Benton, Elijah Clark, Gavin Wimsat, who yes, have all panned yeah, out yeah. panned yep. out great, let me tell you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, Elijah Clark's actually doing pretty good at Syracuse, but Kyrie's gone. I don't even know where he's at actually. Um, Gavin Wimsat, great, great, it's great addition from a recruiting standpoint. That was a really good class in its own right. But uh, honestly, if you look at that class, like um, Braden Fox, Kevin Toth, uh, Sean Munroin, Austin Dean, Zach Taylor, all gone. So it's like it wasn't that great of a class after all. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think this is going to, I think I'm going to, I'm going to say it. this is going to be his best class since his return to the banks. And I think you can um, go give Marquise Watson another raise for that one, because he's, he's the, uh, the backbone of this class right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's definitely earning his paycheck and uh, I'm sure Jan was pretty happy that uh, he was able to convince him to stick around. Um, yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Well, that's all we got. Uh, this turned out to be a little bit longer than we both yeah. thought it would go, but uh, that's what happens when news breaks while you're recording. Um, yeah, there, not, again, there still will be more additional uh, news items that will break next week. So we are uh, once again emphasizing to stay tuned to your podcast feeds. Stay tuned, stay tuned to Monday. the boards stay tuned on Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, all the um, other days of the week. Uh, one real quick thing. Tomorrow's channel golf outing. Uh, we will be speaking with him again. You guys always get mad that like the press asks shitty questions. I'm going to say mm -hmm. it now. You got a question? Just put it in our chat. Put it somewhere. Put it on the yep. message board. DM it to me. Put it. Um, tweet it at me. I don't care. Just let me let me know what you want me to ask. And as long as it's within reason, which I like to think most of the questions we've received are. Yep. Always some. There's some. There's some ones that are out there, but uh, yeah, just if it's within reason, just let me know what you want me to ask him. I'll ask him. Um, I'll try to get anything and everything from him. Um, if you're going to the golf outing, sorry that you're finishing in at least second place, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> like, I got a ringer. Like, we're good. My my uncle's like golfed with all these like professionals and stuff. He's golfed with VJ Singh. He's golfed with like a couple other guys. I can't remember the names. He's done like a. He did Ron Jaworski's like. Pro Am recent or a couple of years ago. That's with pretty like, sick. Put, he, uh, he golfed with Jim Kelly, which was pretty cool, and Merrill Hodge. So he's he's really damn good, and I'm playing his ball probably 95 percent of the time tomorrow. So <laughs> we're not losing. <laughs> yeah, you just got to give him a couple that he can use. Uh, you'll make up that's for. Uh... I can make one putt. That's it. It's good. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. So. Well, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, you know, this is a little bit of a weird time for a podcast to come out, but I'm sure you guys won't complain about that. Uh, yeah. Me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Network Podcast, signing off.